I had to get out for a bit. I said I was going out for a ciggy, only you can't smoke here. You'd think, being an undertaker's, they'd encourage a little bit of smoking. You know, bring business on a bit early, like. Nah. Anyway, I had to get out for a bit. Me mam has always been a bit... tricky. You know, difficult to deal with. A range in me dad's funeral certainly hasn't brought out a more reasonable side. I felt sorry for the funeral director. I nearly offered him a fag break too. I mean, he wouldn't have needed to smoke. Just give him a chance to escape for a bit. Mr Pyer, a real name, I did check, was explaining about putting makeup on him so he didn't look quite so grey. She wants an open casket, you see. I was dead against that. I mean, he wasn't a particularly good looking bloke when he was alive. But the falling from the ladder from the roof and landing with his face on the spade has left him looking all sort of contorted and flat on one side. Anyway, she says he never wore makeup when he was alive. Why would he start now? Mr Pyer says they can make him look a little bit more normal. I find that hard to believe. So then she says about how will they manage the shape of the coffin? Mr Pyre, he looks all sort of perplexed and says all the coffins are pretty much the same shape. Well, how will they cope with the legs, she says, at which point Mr Pyre and I realise that she must think that he must still be in the same position as that that they found him in. One leg sort of bent out to the side and back in again and the other one bent up in the air and back down. He says in a mild manner, that they would put his legs back in a more comfortable position for him. She says she's not daft, she knows he can't feel anything, but at the same time she doesn't like the idea of him, his legs being broken to get them into the coffin. Mr Pyre explains that actually they'd straightened his legs at the hospital and he promised that he didn't suffer any more indignity than was absolutely necessary. He then asks, what clothes is he going to wear? Well, Mam says that he should be dressed in his suit so that he looks smart if he's going to be viewed in his coffin. I did point out that my dad hated wearing a suit and would have been much more comfortable in a comfy jumper. Well, you'd think I'd said something really stupid. He won't know what he's wearing, she says. No, I want him looking smart. She did admit that he hadn't worn his suit in a very long time and she wasn't sure it would fit him. Mr Pyer says they can always undo the seams at the back so that nobody can see. Same with his shirt, so you wouldn't know they were too tight. She says that she wasn't sure if he still had his smart shoes anymore, but says if not, she'd pick some up in a charity shop. Only, could she have them back before he was cremated so that they didn't go to waste? It was just as bad at the florists yesterday. She was going to have his name in letters alongside the coffin in the hearse. She'd seen it on the telly, the hearse with the name in flowers and people lying in the street as it went by. My dad had friends, but he wasn't that popular. If we asked all his friends and family to line the street, we'd barely get out the cul-de-sac. Anyway, she thought it would be nice. Until the florist pointed out that you pay by the letter. His name was Frederick. Two Ds. That's ten letters worth of white roses. Then she says, how about we have Dad spelled out by the side? I said that's not fair on the others though, is it? Finally, she agrees to a spray on the top. The florist suggested we have red and white roses. Oh no, says me ma'am, red and white together, it means death. Surely, I says, if ever you're going to have red and white roses together, then on top of a coffin is the right place. She thinks I'm being flippant. 
after a lot of discussion about different flowers, with he wouldn't have liked them. I eventually reminded her that he wasn't particularly fussed about flowers anyway and probably wouldn't care. And, more importantly, he wouldn't see them. She chose some, eventually. Some very tall ones. The florist is going to have to make a few adjustments or they're not going to fit in the hearse. She did ask Mr Pyer if the flowers get cremated too. Only, if they did, how would she know which of the ashes were me dad and which were the flowers? I spoke without thinking. I said, well, there'll be the box too. I admit that was a mistake. I think she thought they'd remove him from the coffin at the same time as they took off his shoes. Will that affect what she does with the ashes, she says. Only she'd seen this nice onyx pendant and ring. She thought she might have his ashes made into that. Mr Pye was very good, actually, and explained. At least enough to make her happier about the ash. I suppose I should get back in there. I could have had two fags in this time. No doubt by now she'll have arranged a silver brass band and an open mic night. Anyway, I need to move things along. The priest is visiting this afternoon. It's going to be a long afternoon. She's bought a bottle of whiskey and made rock cakes. Mm -hmm.